Hello booktube and welcome back to my channel. This is Dennis and you're watching The Intellectual Reads. Today I am excited to bring you five books that I compiled from a list of the 33 books that I've read this year. Uh, it was very difficult to narrow them down but I thought of number of five was a rather fair number only because uh, it equates to about one seventh and I didn't want to go into and say like a number 10 where it would be a third of the books that I read. The interesting thing I found about narrowing th them down is that they all kind of had their own specific genre or their own specific timeline and they were unique in, in themselves. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the five top books of the year that I would recommend just about to anybody. The first book is The Anniversaries. It is a book so lengthy that it is actually a part of two books. Uh, this is a book or an epic however you want to call it, but this is definitely a great feat by the author. The author is Yu Wee Johnson and it was I think translated last year. I believe it came out in September uh, of 2018. This is a book that traces a mother and a daughter's uh, life in New York uh, starting in August 1967 and finishing in August 1968. The mother and the daughter arrive in New York from Germany where they survived, well not them, but the mother survived the Holocaust and the daughter survived the life in East Germany under the rule of the Soviet Union when they took over after Hitler's defeat. And so they arrive in New York and this is their experience in the city. The delighting thing about this book, this might be the hardest brick I've ever had to hold up for an extended amount of time as my elbow can't even balance here on the hand rest. Uh, therefore, sorry if this book kind of meanders. Uh, but kind of a meditative study on history, on present times, and uh, comparing and contrasting uh, the Holocaust to the Vietnam War, as well as a mother's and a daughter's kind of journey through a new environment, the feeling of being an outcast, and having to adapt to a new uh, territory, and fit into a new sense of life. It deals with the backdrop of the Holocaust through the mo mother's recollection as she retells the story of her survival, of her family's survival, and the uh, fascinating life of her father. The common place, which is New York in the late 60s, is revealed through the daughter's and mother's fascination with reading the New York Times. Uh, as well as through their many journeys around the city. Uh, for example, their constant trips on the weekend uh, riding on the Staten Island Ferry. This is a very captivating book, a very slow book, but a very enjoyable book. And I think that it would probably in the common day era uh, relate to uh, uh, Dugsbury Port is a new book that has been written, although I have not read it, I would imagine it's kind of the same meandering and uh, introspective uh, reflections on society during the late 60s. So definitely would recommend this if you have the courage to pick it up. I think U.B. Johnson is an amazing writer, this translation is superb. and. There's a lot worse stuff you could read. The last thing I will say about this book is that it comes in at 1668 pages. 
but it's not as difficult as it seems because it's not written in one sentence. It is very neatly divided into journal entries which go day by day. So you could read this book over a year, you could leave it on your nightstand and read a day of their life as you go to sleep or either wake up and drag it out. Either way this book would I think impress just about anybody in terms of the author, in terms of his writing style and in terms of all the different information as it relates to the Holocaust and as it relates of the occupation of Eastern Germany by the Soviet rulers and the injustices that were done even long after Hitler had left this planet. The next book I will mention in my top five videos is uh, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier Clegg by Michael Shaben. This book has been discussed on YouTube in numerous videos by numerous different people. I know the book chemist has turned me on to Michael Shaben and I have been reading a novel of his every year. So far I've read uh, The Yiddish Police Union and The Telegraph Avenue. This is the third of his books and I believe this is by far the best book I've re read by Michael Shaben. Uh, this book is so captivating in the essence that it is a story of two cousins one who escapes Germany. A lot of fiction I think that I've been reading especially this year but uh, has to deal with the Holocaust. I think Holocaust is just in general a very captivating uh, kind of uh, chaotic and in, in, injustice fulfilled uh, event that a lot of literature even to this day kind of spoons out of that thread. The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier Clay is no different from that. The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier Clay tells the story of two cousins, uh, Joe Cavalier and Sam Clay. As they begin in the comic book industry from the late 1930s through the 1940s, establishing themselves as artists and writers, specifically Joe Cavalier is a artist that makes his way from Germany and Sam Clay is a residing uh, inhabitant of New York living in Brooklyn with his mother who welcomed Joe uh, and provide for him a home after his escape uh, and once these two cousins meet they instantly hit it off and make it big in the industry of comic books and this is their adventure through that industry. This is the adventure of Joe Cavalier as he tries to come to terms uh, with his past through his art and uh, multiple uh, events that take place uh, in the news from his hometown which uh, uh, present new challenges and how he conquers them through art and through having an avenue to express himself. The story of Sam Clay uh, is also very interesting. Uh, we learn of a writer who is uh, exceptional at composing uh, storylines and is in demand not just by Cavalier but helps out many other artists in their community at the same time is uh, battling with his uh, homosexuality and uh, dealing with issues of coming out. Uh, in many instances this story is a wonderful story of a story of family, uh, love, art and uh, making your way through the world as a young artist. Coming in at number three is a biography of Nelson Elgren, uh, a writer who grew up in the Great Depression and uh, this book just blew me away. Uh, it's, it's titled Never a Lovely So Real and it is published by Colin Asher. 
Uh, if you search for this book online, there's a great interview that he gives, uh, which is like an hour long. Actually, I'll link it down below. But Nelson Elgren apparently was an amazing author. Uh, Hemingway loved his books. Uh, there was a correspondence between Nelson Algren here and Hemingway's wife where she stated that among all his tribulations never to give up because Hemingway at the time was giving out all his books all across Cuba. Hemingway stated that the greatest American author of his time was uh, Faulkner and he believed that Nelson Algren was the second uh, best author writing at that time. Uh, later in life, Hemingway believed that, in fact, Nelson Algren was even better than Faulkner. And it is amazing that nobody speaks of this guy. And in these pages, the interesting story you get of his travels as he had to basically go on trains through all of America very reminiscent of John Kerouac and um, try to survive in a nation going through the Great Depression. You could say that uh, he was the John Kerouac before John Kerouac. Uh, his life follows such interesting uh, timeline. Uh, he was an author that was appreciated by the highest of authors, uh, yet could never get the kind of readership. Uh, he struggled with the publication of his books. Uh, there were many events here that were stated where he would go and there would be a talk uh, presented for him and then his publisher never brought any books to sell at the talk. Uh, the majority of the book also dwells into his upcoming during the Great Depression and his inclination to uh, become a communist. You could see the temptation behind communism uh, with writers like Trotsky and other influencers when there's nothing to eat at the table. Uh, and so his life kind of began by attaining a place in the world for himself through a communistic organization in Chicago. And the book basically details his life as he starts to get tracked by the FBI and how much damage they did to this author, how the FBI can ruin a person's life. He tried to enter World War II but he was restricted and constantly frustrated being kept in camps because uh, the FBI uh, had a file on him and would uh, restrict him from being sent overseas. And it's just such a fascinating and gripping tale of a person. Later in life, there's a lot in this book about his love affair with Simone de Bovary and uh, their uh, ups and downs, tribulations of, of, a, of a love affair that crossed the Atlantic Ocean as she would often travel to Chicago and he had made quite a few appearances or trips to Paris to visit her. But the most uh, fascinating object I found here is, is what he believes that a writer should be, which is um, a writer should uh, defend the defenseless. So when, I don't know, somebody murders somebody in a cruel place or in a cruel way and he goes to court and the whole world is against him. The writer's responsibility is to defend him. Uh, and I thought it was a very... Uh, I thought it was like an epiphany, like it, like it, you know, writing for fluff is one thing, but being a serious writer is a completely different thing and this is a very very serious writer and I'm kind of ashamed to say that I read this in like September and still have not picked up a book of his but one of my kind of challenges or goals in the following year is to read some of Nelson Algren's fiction because this biography completely captivated me and 
made me in awe of a person who's larger than life. The last two books that I would like to speak to you uh, that made it to my top five, uh, I don't currently have a copy of them because they were books that I feel could relate to just about anybody. And so when I finished them, my excitement instantly wanted me to put them into other people's hands. Uh, and unfortunately, I've not gotten them back, nor do I expect to. But it doesn't take away from the value uh, I saw in these books uh, and the enjoyment that I got out of them. The first of those books is The Collected Schizophrenias, which are essays written by Esme Waijun Wang. These essays reveal the way society views uh, the schizophrenic disease. And uh, I was instantly gripped by the book when, in I believe the first essay, she comments how our initial reaction as a person uh, when we meet a schizophrenic on the street who is dealing with an episode is to back away instead of trying to help him. And I thought that was a very powerful message. And I, based on her writing, still understand that many of us don't, don't know the effects of this disease and how it can claim a life, how prejudiced society is in general against these people, including top level universities like Yale and uh, other places who expel students, ask them to leave, even though they may be great minds. Uh, many societal institutions don't want to de deal with a disease that becomes so destructive. Uh, the essays here are not just musing on society's perception of, of this disease, but also on the experience of having to tackle it day in and day out, having to survive episodes that last over multiple months. And I was extremely fascinated uh, just by her experiences and, and by the depth of knowledge that she was able to contribute uh, when explaining uh, her symptoms and the way she has to go through about life. It is a very touching book. It is a book that will make you wake up. And it's a book that in general will educate you. Uh, again, I think this book could be read just by anybody. And I think it should be read by everybody. Uh, the final book and the book that if I had to order 30 copies of any book that I've read this year and give it out on the middle of Times Square, that book would be Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. Uh, Kaya, the main character here, is a girl who grows up with no parents and uh, her learning of the world and her becoming one with nature uh, and how she depends on nature to survive. This book to me emerges the Jungle Book with the Mockingbird. Uh, if any of those books appeal to you or if you just want a fascinating story that will grip you and never let you go to the last page full of wonderful nature writing. She, Delia Owens comes from a background of nature writing. This is her first novel. And the way she's able to describe and depict the marshland that is in the Carolinas is just beautiful. Uh, the story is gripping. Therefore, I think this book could be enjoyed just about by anybody. And uh, I am very, very happy to say that it was the best book I read this year. Uh, I hope that 2020 will be an even better reading year and I am happy with the list that I compiled because it included a book about New York in the 60s which was a massive epic 
It included a contemporary fiction with the Crawdad saying it included a biography, which is a nonfiction. It included an essay collection, uh, and it included a book that you know was written ten or so years ago. So it, it's all over the place, but uh, it is a list I'm very proud of and I'm proud to recommend any one of these books to just about anybody. If you've read them or if you have an opinion on them or if you want to read them or just leave a new comment for the uh, new year. I would gladly appreciate it and uh, see you guys in the next year. Hope 2020 is an amazing year for all of us.